Mr. Trump. Hi. Hello. How you doing? Nice to be with you, Megan. Great to have you nice here. You. You're looking well. You're looking well. As are well. you. <laughs> Back in January, you gave an off-the-record interview to the New York Times. It was apparently audio-taped. Now, a recent report in BuzzFeed, citing sources at the Times, reports that in that interview you expressed flexibility when it comes to your immigration policy, specifically with respect to your promise to deport the 11 million people who are now living here illegally. You have suggested that you may have expressed some flexibility when it comes to the size of the wall that you want to build. Uh, but did you tell them specifically that you are flexible when it comes to your deportation plans? I don't know exactly what, when you talk about uh, off the record. First of all, BuzzFeed, they were the ones that said under no circumstances will I run for president. And were they wrong? But a lot of people said that. Then uh, I did have a meeting with the editorial board of the New York Times, a very nice meeting. Many of those things were off the record, I think at their suggestion and my suggestion. And I think being off the record is a very important thing. I think it's a very, very powerful thing. And I will say this, uh, these three gentlemen have gone off the record many times with reporters, and I think they want to honor it. And I would always honor that. I will say, though, in terms of immigration and almost anything else, there always has, has to be some, you know, tug and pull and deal. And, you know, when I watched Ted stand on the Senate floor, I had great respect for what he did. He stood there for a day and a half or something. In the meantime, what came of it? Nothing. You have to be able to have some flexibility, some negotiation. Now, sometimes you ask for more than you want and you negotiate down to the point. I may have discussed something like that with the New York Times, but I would never release off the record conversations. I don't think it's fair, frankly, to do that to anybody. How flexible are you on this issue? Not very flexible. No, not very flexible. I, I give the example. Uh, I'm going to build a wall. I'm the one that wants the wall. I'm the one that can build the wall. It's going to get built. And by the way, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. I can tell you that. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. But, and I used an example, and this isn't necessarily what was said, but whatever was said, uh, the wall's 50 feet high. Is it going to be 45 feet or 40 feet? That could very well be. That could very well, he wants it to be higher. That could very well be. But there's always give and take, there's always negotiation, and the best negotiator that knows what he's doing will make a great deal. But we need give and take in government. If you don't have give and take, you're, not gonna, you're never going to agree on anything. Senator Rubio, you not only supported the failed immigration reform effort through the Gang of Eight, but you're still on record as favoring an eventual path to citizenship for those who are here illegally. And in addition, you favored in-state tuition for Florida illegal immigrants. You've been hitting Mr. Trump hard on this flexibility discussion with the New York Times, but his supporters might say at least his opening stance was tough. Well, first of all, <clears throat> let me say that on the issue of the off the record, that's not up to the New York Times. That's up to you, Donald. If tonight you tell the New York Times to release the audio, they will do it, and we can exactly see what your true views are on immigration. Fine. Because it is a major issue in your campaign that you've made a center issue. Now, as far as my record on it is concerned, I absolutely want to solve this issue. And I did the best we could in a Senate that was controlled by liberal Democrats and Harry Reid in the hopes that the House, made up of conservatives, would take it up and make it even stronger. And I said that repeatedly at the time. I'm not just saying that now. I said it throughout that process. We do need to deal with this issue. When I'm president, it will not be dealt with the way it was done in the Senate. It will be done first and foremost by bringing illegal immigration under control and proving it to the American people. And only after that is done can anything else happen. And it will be something the American people support. We'll see what they're willing to support. It's not going to be an executive order, and we're not going to ram it down their throats. Mr. Trump, will let you respond. But do you want to, will, will you release the tapes? Will you authorize the time to release the tapes? I will say one thing. What Marco said is, I understand it. He's talking about a little give and take and a little negotiation. And you know what? That's okay. That's not the worst thing in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. I happen to be much stronger on illegal immigration. Sheriff Joe Arpaio endorsed me, and if he endorses you, believe me, you are the strongest from Arizona. But give and take is okay, and I thought what he said is okay. We may dis, you know, differ on the degree, but what he said to me is okay. Will you release the tape? No, authorize I the never country? do that. I, don't, I would not do that. I don't think... I have too much respect. If I deal with you off the record, if I deal with Brett or Chris off the record, I have too much respect for that process to say, just release everything. I would not do that. Okay.